What is up, everybody? I hope everyone is doing great. Bama Tony 73 here. Roll Tide Roll, baby. Let me tell you something. You know, you can't win them all. I mean, I don't have to really come here and crow up because I didn't do um, a pre-vid um, boasting on my team. And, and however, I should have. I should have. I should have done that. I miss it. I've just been busy uh, with not just work, just playtime as well. So I just been uh, I've been busy, but you know that's still not an excuse to to not come make Alabama videos. Come on, man, come on, you know. Um, the, what a depressing season! Yeah, all you can say about this season. Um, you no, know, it's not every season that you say Tennessee beat us. You know, it's been fifteen, sixteen years since um, Tennessee's found a way to win and. Uh, this team they have this season has uh they definitely found a way to win. Congrats to Tennessee Volunteers on uh on that win. Um it's been almost two decades coming up on creeping up on knocking on the door two decades uh that you haven't beat Alabama. So So that's um that's something I'm sure that made you feel really well. Um also LSU. LSU, I mean what can you say about that game? You know, the the players fought their asses off. You know, you made it to a Overtime, double overtime, whatever, and um, and just uh, couldn't get it done. We would have won the game had they not made the um, two point conversion. But congrats to the LSU Tigers um, for making that play. You know that was just a um, one of those kind of plays that you you know you're just gonna throw it all you know throw it all out there you know just. Throw your whole hand out there and see if you win or whatever. So that's about what it was, and you know, and they, it was a great gamble because um, LSU pulled it out. Um, and it's not every year that they can say that they beat Alabama either. Okay, we own Tiger Stadium. That's all there is to it. If you don't believe me, look it up. Statistics, history, and it shows that Alabama is um, dominant when it comes to uh, you tickers. Anyway, 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 that's really not why I'm here. I'm here because I have a couple of toys I'm going to try to squeeze in. My latest two toys I'm going to try to squeeze into this one video. No, that sounds bad. It's like I don't want to be here or something, but no, that's not it. It's um, I'm just going to try to put them both into this one video if all possible. It might be a little long of a video, but we'll see. Um... <laughs> But, I mean, what can you say when it gets back? Let's get back to the football for just one second. I mean, what can you say? Uh, and, you know, all I can say at this point is it doesn't look like we're reloading. It looks like we're rebuilding for some odd reason. And um, and you can't win them all. You can't win a championship every season. I, I know that. I know that. I've been following college football over 40 years. Of course I know that. I know that. Um it's rare to win two to three national championships in your whole team's history. But um, what Nick Saban's done is unprecedented. And, you know, it's just it's phenomenal. And it is a dynasty. Is the dynasty over? Maybe. 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 Maybe not. Um, I say it's over if Nick Saban cannot find a way to, um, to build a championship team next year and uh, make it to the Final Four. And um, we'll win the SEC title, make it into the semis, and um, win that, and then go play for all the marbles and win that. And so if Alabama can't win the national championship next year, then I say yes, most definitely the dynasty's over. Um, But, you know, at this point, all I can hope for is to beat Ole Miss and Auburn. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm hoping for, and then maybe we can – Scrounge up a good bowl game out of it. You know, I know that sounds bad, and it sounds like I'm some, you know, big-headed, you know, uh, Alabama fan that's real obnoxious and all this, but that's not really it, okay? That's not it at all. Um, I'm plenty obnoxious when I want to be, when I'm talking trash and all this, but that's not what, it, that's not what it's about. When you have achieved what Saban has brought to this program, you do start looking, you know, you start expecting it. And when it doesn't happen, you know, you kind of raise your eyebrow and you're like, why? Well, what's going on here? Is there something going on internally with the program that, that, um, that we need to know about us fans need to know about. 
Or is it just he, Nick Saban, is just getting too old and he just ain't himself and can't coach the team up the way he used to? Oh, and the players just aren't buying in uh, um, to his, to his, um, and to all of what he's saying. I mean, to, to just buying into Nick Saban and, and what he's uh, selling, period. Um, I don't think that's it. I think they're plenty buying in. They're just, um, they're not coming into these games like the other teams that have won the national championships. You know, they played every game like it was for the national championship. You know, so it don't matter if it was against Bowling Green or North Texas. Bama was bringing it. Western Kentucky, what have you. Bama was bringing the pain. And it really, really built a defensive identity that I've never seen in all my life. That, um, that some of these defenses that, that uh, Saban's had. And, um, and number one. Number one defense is ranked number one in all four major categories. So, you know, it's, it's not easy to do that. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's over. The dynasty has burned up. I'm just kidding with y'all. It, it hasn't. Um, I believe, honestly, that Saban does have another national championship in his blood. And I believe that Bama will win the national championship this coming season. So, y'all hear it. Okay. Y'all heard it here first. I'm not just saying that to be biased or anything like that. I'm just saying I believe that Alabama will win the national championship this com coming season. And if we don't, then yes, this dynasty has burned up and uh, things need to be done and handled within the program. Um, okay, but moving on. Let's try to squeeze in these. All right, what I have here on top is called the Ambition Soldier Tattoo Machine. It comes with an extra battery. And this one, I got the four two stroke. Okay. I like a tattoo machine that has at least a four, four stroke. This one has a four two. So let's have a look at it. I've already used it. I've done these tattoos here. It's hard to see right now, but let's have a look at this. But it, it does really good work. But this is a four two stroke is what actually come in it. And then this an extra extra one in there as well so okay what do we have here okay i have obviously used this so i've got it out of the packaging somewhat but just put it back in to show you guys how it um actually come to me so this is your um your extra battery right here and these things are high, very expensive for the batteries. See this gloss look to it, gloss black. It's cheaper if you get it in gloss black, opposed to the chrome gold stainless steel nickel ring that goes around it, and then the red, green, and as you see the colors here, different ones. But um, if you do get the all black gloss, it is um, that's ah, forty, fifty bucks cheaper. But the extra batteries, you, these batteries are awesome. And guys out there that have the um, the Ambition Soldier, you know as well as I do. These batteries, they last forever, man. I've been I've been tattooing on. Let's see this one here. As you see, it is about dead, and I've been going on this thing for I don't know three days. Tattooed one guy. Lives up the road from me. It's got one bar left. And that's a 7.5. It goes in five increments here. Sets of five. So here we go. Just hit it one time. That will stop it. Pause it or whatever. Hit it one more time. Eight. It's not quiet. No, hardly no buzz vibration whatsoever in this thing. It's hitting pretty hard on nine. You hear that? Sounds great. I mean, this thing just 
It's one great tattoo machine. I, there are some things about it I don't like, but I won't get into all that. But it's very few, very few things um, that I have found that I don't like about this. As you see, it has the... The click, click grip needle depth for your needle depth. So what we'll do is we'll insert, we'll insert a cart in it, and um, and we'll see what. We got it on. As you see, seven five. That's what I'd normally line in. If you can see the needle in here. There we go. But. See how long it's coming out there. It's auto focus on this camera phone. All right, this is that's out as far as it'll go. It's out there pretty good, as you see. Anyway, let's um let's get on to uh, reasons why this thing is a really really good tattoo machine um first of all let's turn it off hold it in for three seconds it goes off but let's see why for one if you remove this this gets to your um right here where you can see mm -hmm. See right here. Okay, there we go, right there. It's hard to see. There we go. There it is, see. If you can see it, four two stroke. You see that? All right. Now we'll just put it back in. And it's just like so. That's it. And then your battery, of course, it goes back counterclockwise. And it, and it comes off like that. And like my other one, it'll, it's magnetic right there. And I like that too, but this is, um, it's a lot tighter. It's just a lot better machine in my opinion. My other one is really nice too, but this one, um, I really, really like working with this one because it is a 4-2 stroke and it, it's, it really puts the ink in you. Line's great and it, it also packs pretty well. Let me see. Kind of put some orange through here today, and now I'm just trying to shade this. I'm actually bringing that tattoo to life, actually. So it's looking pretty good. It's coming out pretty good. But I love it. This is a great one. So go check it out. Is the Ambition Soldier with a four-two stroke, and then it also comes with a three-five wheel, three-five stroke wheel. Remember, get the gloss black one. And, um, and it's cheaper. They're going to charge you a lot more money for a colored one when, when nobody's going to see it anyway. Nobody's going to see this when you wrap it up with your, um, all of your grip tape, right? So nobody's going to see that. Okay, you're going to have a bag around this and you're also going to have grip tape around it when you do your work. So you're going to have... As I said, grip tape around it of your color, whatever color you like, and, and then you're gonna have um, you're gonna have um, if I've got them close by, I'll show you. Yeah, here's one. Here's some. These are the bags that go around your tattoo pins, 
And uh, they cover it really well to keep all the plasma, tattoo, ink, you name it, off of your machine. I love it. It really does good work. And I can't wait. If it wasn't so late at night right now, I would get started on it again. Uh, I'm tired. Not that it's loud because we heard how quiet it is. So say you're lining. That's eight. Say you're lining on eight. You can barely hear this thing. And there's just minimal vibration. It's just hardly any. goes to five and you can't hear that hardly but again the ambition soldier they make an ambition ninja and, and some more but i like this one that's the reason why i bought it the ambition soldier with a 4-2 stroke it was like 259 dollars with tax and it came with an extra battery so can't complain i like it it was a good deal it cost it was actually cheaper than than my other one and um this one's a lot better okay uh and the packaging is not bad at all either you know as you see and it does have rca capabilities as well i've got if you have um a power supply which i do take your battery off of your machine put this on it and then you put your rca and you're tattooing all night. But these will do you all night. These two batteries will last you for days. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I went for seven and a half hours. And it only knocked one bar off the battery. Then I went for another day. Doing just different stuff. One on um, a tattoo. Where I did some lettering on a guy. And then messing around with mine. And for seven, eight hours that day. And um it knocked another bar off. I'm just saying these batteries are just, they're phenomenal, man. But here's what comes in it also. You got your, your O-rings and some Allen wrenches and your other uh, stroke wheel here. It's a 3.5, I guess. It don't say, but I'm guessing that's what it is. Okay, so the Ambition Soldier, 4.2 stroke. You've seen it. Got it on Amazon. Really good one. Now, on to the Kimber. So as you see, this is a Kimber 1911 45 ACP. Okay, so let's have a look at this baby. Ooh, okay. Now, you can get this pistol. This is a very nice pistol. I love this one. This is the best 1911 I've ever owned. And I've owned two. Um, this one I will not get rid of. See if the weapon's clear. It's clear. Check. Check. It is. Clear. Now. It is a very, 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 very nice pistol. Um, this pistol was a thousand ninety nine dollars. Uh, I got it for eight seventy five, so I got a good deal on it. Um, at my gun shop down the road, Line of Fire. Check them out. They're just past the Moody Crossroads. Line of Fire. But uh, as you see here, I have now these magazines. I don't know how you pronounce this, Meggar. MEG, they're really good ones. I mean, these these magazines are really nice. They fit the gun good. Meggar. As you see, what I'm working with is serious business right there. And this is the magazine that came with the Kimber. This um, magazine right here. It's also got hollow points in it. So I'm not going to lock and load the weapon, but it's got a good fit. But as you see, now these are aftermarket grips. These actually right here are the grips that came on the weapon. These wood grained um, grips, which are nice. They're, they're nice. Uh, I like the way they feel as well, but it's just um, 
something about the Punisher and the Punisher grips and these screws that I ordered. It's really set it off, I think. And I got these grips for like 45 bucks. They're not real expensive. And I had some more that were on the way that were like $90. And it was coming from Tampa, Florida. It was during the hurricane. So the guy said, just going to be quite a while before, you know, I get, I get those to you. He said, and I mean quite a while. He said, so I'm just going to refund your money. And I said, okay. So he refunded my money, but um, I found these. And I like these. The ones that I ordered were, um, they were black and it was in nickel that said Kimber across it. That's pretty nice. But these were my second choice. So. But, um, and the way this thing shoots, let me tell you, let me tell you, it shoots like a dream. It shoots like it looks. It is a full size 45, bigger than my Glocks. It actually weighs a little more, I believe. I'm not sure. I don't quote me on that, but um, I'm thinking with all this steel, this thing's going to weigh more than a Glock, but it shoots better than the Glock. Now, this thing right here, it also has, as you see, my trigger, my hammer, skeletized hammer is back here. It's got skeletized trigger, and it's got these grooves here that actually, if you want to, you can lock and load it from there. Or here, but that's what that is. And you take the gun apart here. Comes with a little tool in here. Spin this around, the barrel comes out, pull it down, slides off. And it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy um, takedown. It's not quite as easy as the Glock, and it takes longer to put it back together than the Glock. But uh, other than that, it's um, it's just the top of the line, man. Uh, what can you say? This is a top-of-the-line pistol, and it shoots like one as well. Shoots better than any Glock I've ever had. Crisp trigger. Listen to that. Listen to that. Listen. Great. This stainless is this is called the stainless LW. Now that means lightweight, which I don't see. It's pretty heavy pistol. It's, it's, it's beefy, and but I like the sleekness of it. Um, but it is a full size 45 ACP. It's um, <laughs> I would hate to see what the other ones that weren't lightweight weigh because this is a pretty decently weighed weapon here. It's, it weighs a pretty good bit. But I can see where um, they would call it an LW lightweight. But it's a stainless lightweight Kimber. And I have seen this gun online for $1,299. I've seen it for $799. I've seen it for $899. And I've seen it for about $959. So it just depends on where you get it is what you're going to pay for it. Um, but... It's a thousand dollar pistol any way you want to slice it and dice it. Um, you might can get it cheaper as I did. I got it for eight fifty, eight seventy. I can't remember somewhere along in there. And uh, but with the ammo and everything together, it was well over a thousand dollars I paid. Before I walked out, I bought t-shirts and all kind of shit. So by the time I got out, I'd done spent close to thirteen hundred dollars on on different things. Um, but yeah. Really nice. It really shoots well, too. Really shoots well. But I'm going to get some ammo back in this. And I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all have a good one. And let me tell you something. Roll damn tide. Let me tell you right now, Alabama is coming to revive, relive that destiny. The dynasty of the Alabama Crimson Tide, baby. And it is our destiny to do that. So... For those of you that say we're washed up, <laughs> let me tell you something. Nick Saban, he's got another national championship in him, and he's gonna let, he's gonna show you that. So, good luck to your teams, and until the next time, y'all have a good one. This has been a twenty-five minute video. I am out. Roll Tide.